Hello lovely people, welcome to my channel. It's Adhila here, Saturday Night Stage, and thank you so much for tuning in. So today is the summer solstice, the longest day of the year in the Northern Hemisphere. And I went out to get some flowers to share with the brow through, but because it's the summer solstice, there's so much in the garden. And I thought that we should have something special to celebrate the fact that we're halfway through the year. And that it is the longest day of the year in the northern hemisphere so i just got a little posy and it's got my absolute favorite rose here it's a beautiful pink and i've got some dianthus and some more dianthus and some wild geranium and of course the daisies the daisies are just righteously beautiful at the moment and we've got some apple flower over here so wherever you are in the world, I'm sending you this bouquet of um, summer flowers here from my little garden in England. Right, so we're just going to pop the flowers over there. All right, there's nothing quite like a fresh bouquet of flowers in the house. I absolutely love it. And we've got our birder issue, the july issue so even though we're celebrating the 21st of june we're actually doing the july issue i've got my line drawing heads up i have already traced a pattern from here um and i'll show you once we get to it but um i thought that this was a relatively decent issue some good styles some repeats and some outstanding ones um so yeah lovely cover very summery very bright very inspiring you know with the hat and everything and i love the vintage look um on the cover here so let's get into it and for those of you that might be new i subscribe to the bird a german issue and i always get asked this a lot why i get the german issue even though i'm not a native german speaker but it's because i feel like the german issues have got better shelf appeal because i've got an extensive collection and i need to be able to easily see which issue i have and these ones have got the binding that allows you to see that's got a spine so it's the German issue, but it's the same patterns that you get in the English or the French issue. Right, let's have a look through this uh, lovely issue. So uh, first off, um, the first pattern that we're offered is an easy uh, dress pattern. And it's got a simple uh, V-neck over here and some shearing on the waist and a little bit of shearing on the sleeve here just to add a little bit of detail which when you think about it doesn't seem like a lot but it actually gives it it adds a little extra something here you know i think it takes it from sort of like just a plain normal ordinary dress into something that does create a little bit of an interest and they've made it here in this really um lovely rami seersucker style looking fabric so very nice very relaxed feel to it and i do quite like that and i do appreciate that it is a v-neckline and if you've ever sewn with a v-neckline you'll know that this can be really quite tricky to do without gaping unless you've got a seam here that makes things so much easier and so that's a that's a really good um design touch i thought okay and then over here we've got these sailor pants that you have to wear with these rope belts which i'm sure obviously you don't have to use that that's just a stylistic thing but they've got like this wrap over style here and what's quite interesting i noted was that the front has got just a contoured waist but it doesn't have a waistband but it looks like the back has got a waistband so quite interesting in some hip yoke pockets um i can see this being something that people would like particularly in a linen and this is the tall pattern and then we've got some shorts, which are always a great summer staple. I'm making some shorts as well for my summer wardrobe. And these ones are very simple, lowered waist, contoured with a facing and some darts and a zipper on the side. I would say what, and, and these are obviously just ornamental. There aren't actually any pockets there. I would say that these shorts would be pretty awesome if they just had the hip yoke pockets um, over here i don't know about you but i think that summer garments they really do benefit a lot from having uh, pockets and then we've got this very simple interesting dress style that really did catch my eye in the preview but then it lost my eye when i actually browsed through it uh, and that's mostly because of the 
high empire waistline i just feel like that didn't uh, work out sorry i have to i accidentally double printed so i'm gonna have to hold it like that so that you're not seeing the shadow of the other line drawn but it's got pockets and it's got buttons up the front so for me uh, once i actually saw the full details i realized that my avid seamstress sundress basically caters for this style of dress um for me so so that's why it ended up losing my eye i'm just going to move this out of the way because they're taking away the focus the camera is like this fabulous color over there so it's not focusing on this so we just put them over to the side here <laughs> Okay, and then we've got a very simple oversized poncho style top, always good for the seaside, um, but it's added some little rickrack trim over here. So this will be super easy instant gratification sewing uh, project, which I'm, which I'm all about these days. And then we've got this uh, skirt with, it's like a faux sarong is the best way that I could think of it. It's like, I want to wear a sarong, but I'm going to th go through the extra steps of making myself a skirt, sewing it up, putting a zipper in, putting dots in, and then putting a tie belt in as well. You you, you could just get a piece of fabric that you like, you know, uh, finish the edges, sew them up, and you can tie it up as a sarong. So I wasn't too, I wasn't too keen on this particular style for that particular reason, because you can easily achieve the same look. And then we've got a simple super super easy this shouldn't just be easy but it should be super easy top uh so we've got sort of like a rounded overly scallopy neckline here and super oversized sleeves and as you can see here this looks to me more like an over shirt so make it in a sheer fabric for a coverall when you go to the beach and then we've got a pattern of a capelet I liked to call it the bat wing sleeve top. Now, I've actually made this uh, before because this pattern was in a, I think it was a 2015 or a 2016 issue. I'll, I'll put a picture over here of the one that I made, but I made it in the dress version. But when it was first released, you could, make, you could have it in a top and a dress version. And basically, it's got these little capelets over here, which in theory, they're supposed to stay over your shoulder but it just doesn't happen so they actually sort of like just hang off of that and you have your shoulder sticking back and the thing that i found with this one basically if you're interested in making this it is a lovely uh style because i ended up making two of them and i tend to wear them quite a lot particularly if we have to go to the seaside and i tend to wear them um, over my swimming costume because it's easy to just take them off and take them down but the problem that you have is that this fabric doesn't actually stay up like that it's a drapey fabric so it sort of tends to go down and you can get some side boobage going um on there you, you, you can definitely get some side boob so that's just the thing to watch out for but it is a lovely easy to wear um, style and it will let the fabric shine so if you don't mind sewing you know um, the side which shouldn't be a problem if you're wearing swimming costumes or your bikinis or whatever but I find that this is very useful for that very um, specific thing so I very rarely wear it um, outside of that but whenever we go on a holiday to the seaside where there's lakes or there's water or whatever I wear it a lot actually so it's quite useful in that regards now this one surprised me because it didn't actually catch my eye in the browse through i thought oh, okay but when i saw it i actually thought hey i like this i like its simplicity and i like the fact that it is strapless and it would just create this because i like showing off my shoulder in summer because i'm constantly layered up nine months of the year so when the sun is out i you know basically my skin is craving the vitamin d from sunshine so i actually like this and i actually made a note that this is something that i would like to make and it's also instant sewing gratification because it's just an elastic strap over here your bust does an elastic over there as well it's a great last minute make and what i like about it is it is actually patterned for woven fabrics but you can make this with jersey as well and just take in the seams to make it tighter if you wanted to. But I quite like this. Um, so yeah, so I made a note that this is something definitely to make. I'm all about the instant sewing gratification at the moment. There's a time and place for it. And I definitely do appreciate being given options in the new issue. 
Now, what have we here? What have we here? Have you guessed yet? Have you guessed yet that this is the pattern that I traced out? So this pattern is deceptively simple. It does look like, oh, it's quite complicated because they've used this beautiful fabric and there's like different colors here. But it isn't actually, at the heart of it, it's just made up of mainly um, these pattern pieces. Sorry, these ones are quite small. So these ones do not have any um, seam allowances on them. I just traced them out. But it, the bottom skirt is basically dindle style. So it's just a rectangle that you have to pleat in. So I didn't bother tracing that one out. I just traced out the top, um, the top part. Because when it comes to dindle skirts, I don't like to waste fabric. So for this rectangle, I'll just use selvage to selvage rather than cut it to what the pattern says, because I just don't see the point of that. So if it's going to be a dindle skirt, I'll use the entire um, width of the fabric. So key things to note um, about uh, this, you have some really, as I was tracing it, so in case you're interested in making it, you know, um, but if not, you can just skip on ahead. Uh, particularly with the uh, band here, you need to make sure that you label which one is the top and which one is the bottom. And same here, make sure that you label the top and the bottom and find a way to make sure that you put that when you cut it out because you can very easily end up putting the top up like that. And then you'll be like, why isn't it fitting? Berta has messed up the thing, but it isn't. You need to know which one is the bottom um, thing. So when you're tracing that out, make a note of that because they're quite similar, but not quite as you can see this bottom is, uh, this bottom is a bit shorter than the top so I've traced mine out without any seam allowances so the other thing as well to note is that the line drawing for this if you look at it right you see there's no zipper down the back the zipper is down the side personally this is a personal preference for me and let me know if you share the same preference as well I prefer to step into my dresses I don't know there's just something so incredibly wonderfully feminine about stepping into the dress and then you zip it up so I'm going to move the zipper on to the back rather than onto the side that just makes life so much easier so I've traced it out and I'm going to be putting the zipper on here but this was supposed to have been cut on the fold so I'm excited about this because I want to get this done before August and I'm going to be making it in a cotton poplin. I just have to select the one that I want. So this is the one that I really, really liked and I'm going to also make a belt for it. What I might do is I might just shorten it slight, slightly so that it's just hitting that area, um, just that area just below the knees for me. Um, I tend to find that, but I, I, I really did like this one. I was just like, oh, so exciting. And it's really nice when you see something that you really, really like and you get so excited about it and you just want to dive into it. Even though it's got yellow in it, I could still see how this would work for me within um, the colors that I love to wear. And then we've got a jacket that I'm pretty sure we have seen before, but it's got those clean minimalist lines because we don't have the lapel and then we've got the pocket to me um this is a nice version of the chanel the iconic chanel jacket but if you wanted a bit of shaping so for me the chanel jacket is just a little bit too boxy for my liking but with this one you can kind of achieve that similar look but you've got the shaping in it so nice one really nice and even the fabric that they used was very similar and then we've got some more super easy, fast and easy to make patterns. We've got this simple boho style top, which I've made a similar item before from a previous birder. And I used a different uh, contrast fabric for that little um, collar, for the flat collar and for the placket over here. And it's very, very charming and it's very nice. So the thing with patterns like this is you can really allow your summer bright, bold print fabrics to shine with the simplicity of the pattern. And then we have that sarong again, except for it is a short. <laughs> Uh, oh, and then this dress also did catch my eye during the browse through because I do. I love dresses. Uh, sorry, during the preview. And it's a fall wrap over dress with some thick straps. I like the thick straps in here because you've got a place where you can hide your bra straps. And I feel like this is high enough for you not to have to worry about accidental, um, you know, a showing of um, stuff down here. 
without having to use a pin. So I do think that that's quite well. And it's also got a v-neck at the back as well in an egg line. So really quite nice, really quite flattery. I do have something similar already, so that's why I didn't feel the urge to jump in and make it. But I've pinned it for something to make for later on. And then we're going extra long with those simple patterns again. So I did find this quite interesting. I think, oh no, the line drawing here is a little bit wrong because this one's showing sleeve, but this one isn't showing a sleeve on there. But you get the idea. You've got this very simple top and it's got a slit over here and it's just a long kaftani. You know, let it breeze through. Sew this with your linen or your rami, just something very, very comfortable. And then we've got a cami top. Cami tops are always such a useful thing for summer. This one's got some drapes, a little bit of drape, a slight cowl feature to it. And doesn't it look gorgeous in this liquid satiny silk that they have used over here? I think um, as part of your uh, repertoire, your smorgasbord of tried and tested patterns, you need to have a cami, particularly for summer. And we've got that dress again in an ombre fabric, um, the bando dress, so sort of very simple, very easy to make. And we have a um, tutorial here for the jacket. And I appreciate this because this jacket is a little bit of an advanced pattern because it requires full lining and it does require some speed tailoring techniques. So it's quite useful for, you know, the seamstress who wants to adventure out into a little bit more of a complex um, pattern and you've got the instructions there and here are some ideas of using hand finishing touches just to add a little uh, touch of je ne sais quoi to your handmade garments now this top i can't make heads or tails of it i don't like it it doesn't make sense to me um yeah so first of all i thought it was going to be a t-shirt but it isn't a t-shirt so it's quite baggy and then it's got a zipper at the back um yeah, I have to see what other people make with this, but it definitely did not get me gaga. And we've got the perennially beautiful, classic, timeless, wide leg trousers or palazzo pla pants. You know, really lovely, really swishy. Make them in a beautiful satiny um, fabric and it will be great for lounging around the pool at the villa. And we've got that um, foul wrap dress again, but this time we've given it some handkerchief hems. Again, gorgeous. Can't fault this. I cannot wait to see what people are going to do with this particular style. I think that they're going to have a lot of fun with it. And there's that top again, the capelet sleeve top. And in the pictures, you can see that they're sort of pulling this little bit of fabric over here. But it doesn't stay. It doesn't stay there. It will just go down. Um, and even here, you can see kind of her hand is sort of keeping that in place there. But that's just going to go down. And this works really well with very, very drapey. You want like really, really drapey. So you know that slinky jersey, it would work well um, with this. You don't want anything that's got too much structure because it actually becomes uncomfortable having all of these folds underneath your armpits, especially in hot weather, which is when you would want to wear this. So I made it... Um, one of the ones that I made, I made in a in a ponty fabric, which was slightly thick, and I was making like a winter version, which was really quite silly. It didn't work out, but it was just really heavy and bulky underneath there. So don't make the same mistake that I did. If you're going to make this, you want to use like a really lightweight, drapey jersey fabric. Definitely not cotton jersey, not t-shirt in jersey. You want that really, really drapey, slinky one. It works well with this. And then we've got some more of the kaftans, the lovely kaftans. The stem's got a little bit of a tie here. You know, you could make this in toweling fabric so that it can be kind of like a toweling um, thing. And how gorgeous are these fabrics together? The yellow and the pink, and then you've got the beads. Fantastic. So we've got those shorts again. And again, I just feel like these shorts would be so much more useful with um, the pockets um, at the front. And then we've got this really stunning stunning ruffles galore like just so many ruffles and when you see ruffles like this you know immediately this is going to be a fabric hungry pattern because these ruffles they 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 use up a lot of fabric but lovely um lovely not my style though because it's just got too much too much movement on here i tend to prefer my ruffles um in the bottom See if we can get that to focus and then we've got a variation on that jacket so in this issue 
For the master pattern, we've been given three different variations. So we've got the plain one where the sleeves go straight down. And then we've got the version where you've got like a, a slight fluted um, trumpet on there. And it's really lovely how you can use this jacket with um, a simple summer dress as a layer. So this gives you an idea of what sort of fabrics you could use. This You could use um, sort of like a medium to heavyweight linen as well and make this in a linen that would be very bellissima actually we've got some little accessories that you can make with some scraps lovely i like the crafting sections and i also like the inclusion of this styling section as well to give you an idea of how to put things together and then we've got the kids sections just some really very simple um dress patterns here and again when you're sewing for children over the summer you're really looking for some very very simple use sharing there to create a skirt you know you don't even really need a pattern for this just cut out two rectangles sew them together put the sharing on the edge and there you've got that so quite um all of these are very super super easy super easy pattern um they're going up to 120a so the last size is the size that my girls would fit in and then on to the bird applies uh size we've got a really lovely black cocktail top is what i would probably call it it just gives me cocktail hour vibe with some of that lace trimming over there and it's an empire line very similar to what we've seen recently i think about two months ago sort of like this sort of empire line and then pre-falling thing and um but this time it's got the flatter the flatter sleeves so yeah and then we've got um a jacket here princess uh, seam lines very uh close cropped at the neck here and then we've got like this lovely little gathering i think it's always good to have a jacket pattern just a simple jacket pattern to make and you know i feel like this one's got some good line details pockets are too small though i can't see these pockets being useful they're very ornamental Oh, and then these were right up soft gamine lines for me. I really quite liked these when I saw them in um, the first look. And yeah, and it's because they're cuffed at the ankle and they're, they're cuffed at the uh, waist. And they look like they're high-waisted from what you can see on there. And of course, they're quite useful because they've got the hip yoke pockets and they've got the cargo pockets. And I love how they've used this geometric print fabric to make the utility the utility trousers into something like city chic so really well done um, with that and then i thought that this was also really really quite gorgeous particularly with the curved empire look here so i think i personally like it when the empire waist is a bit curved rather than when it's just straight i don't know i, I feel like it's a bit harsh because when i saw this i thought oh my days this is quite lovely but it's an empire waist unlike the first empire waist that we saw which was sort of like straight and i love how they've used this blue fabric here and how they've used the contrasting fabric so i can see this one being quite a popular one so the overall vibe oh yeah of course it's cocktail this is why i was getting a cocktail vibe because it was sort of like in a cocktail by here and then we have a simple top with just some added juge on the sleeve here the tie um sleeves there so lovely and we've got that top again but this time it's just been lengthened into um they, do they call it baby doll you know the the one where it's like a really short skirt but anyway we've got these trousers again over here and again they've been given you know turned from utility to something that you could actually go out to cocktail hour with which is really quite <laughs> lovely and we've added some straps here some some straps because you know your pockets are not complete unless you've got some straps to you know sort of like um play around with right let's zoom back in <laughs> Uh, and then we have um, what I think might possibly be the best of the plus size uh, patterns in this issue. The shirt dress that just looks really lovely with the belt. And you don't necessarily have to make it with this particular belt, the self-fabric belt. You can actually make it a more structured belt with the buckle. And I think that that would just add a lot of loveliness to it. And you've got the this tab. I love tabs combined with cuffs. So I think that there's something very 
nice and very simple. I actually have a very similar pattern cut out from a Nip Mode magazine that's been in my UFO box. And it's just sort of reminding me that I need to go find that, except for that one's got an elasticated waist. So this is what we have, lovelies. Some really very simple, simple style uh, patterns uh, for the most part, which I do not find egregious in this issue because I'm actually appreciating the ability to do instant gratification sewing, wherein I'm just letting the fabric shine and I'm able to create something very quickly so that I can have time to do other things. So I'm not particularly um, aggrieved with uh, this, you know, the prevalence of simple styles in this particular issue. I'm eternally grateful that I've got... Uh, this dress here that I'm really excited to sew up and I have no doubt it's the sort of dress that you can modernize I know that their version here is very you know it's got like this very strong vintage vibes because of the fabrics that they've used but easily you can use like a uh, sky blue uh, you know sky blue popling with a dark navy um, on here or just make it in white just make it in white or just in cream and instead of um, this, you just use a tan slim belt, it would be so gorgeous. And I think that it is a timeless sort of style because it's, it's a sundress. So I'm really, really excited about making that. And just for that alone, I really do like this issue. Eventually, at some point, I might give a go at making number 103 here because I I do like its simplicity and how you can easily get shaping with the shearing. And shearing elastic is super, super comfortable. So all in all, I am happy with this issue. Uh, so very quickly, I'm not sure if this is happening with the English issues or the French issues. So do let me know in the comments down below. But when I was looking at the instructions uh, for the last couple of months, they've actually changed it now so that they've got instructions here. So if I show you here. So these ones are the super quick instructions for the pro. So it's just giving you the order in which you would do um, the thing without going into too much detail. And then here... They've now made it so that they've tried actually to make it a little bit easier for somebody who's new to sewing with birds. So they've numbered them for starters and they're titling them, you know, sort of like if it's the armhole or it's the belt or it's the sleeve and what you need to do next, which I think is a very good improvement for the better to bring more people who might find these very scary into the fold of sewing with Berda because it truly is wonderful to be able to get all of these sewing patterns for um, the price of one normal big four pattern you're getting all of that and you have this and you have it you know effectively until you get rid of it so you know who knows maybe in another 10 15 years I might be looking at actually making this maybe I'll change my mind and fall in love with Empire Waste and I'll be like oh I'm gonna make that and I'll have the pattern there with me and I'll be able to trace it off. So anyway, I had a great time with this issue and I'm going to have a great time making up this dress. And I cannot wait to show it to you um, when I do. So in the meantime, let me know, are you going to be making anything from this issue? If so, what's it to be? Uh, do let us know in the comments down below. We always love um, having a good chat about uh, Berda and uh, all of the stuff and if you haven't already please hit that uh, like button and subscribe it really does help support the channel and i really do appreciate you for that and until i see you next time lovelies happy sewing bye hi just a little bonus i thought i'd show you what i'm wearing today i'm wearing a bird 6 2016 number 103 which i just recently finished and it's an a-line dress it's been in my ufo box for so long but <laughs> Anyways, happy summer solstice day. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.